I am Mohammed Tabakuli, the director of the Elahe Omidyar Mir Jalali Institute of Iranian Studies at the University of Toronto. Cyrus in the Six is co-convened by the Honorable Ali Esasi, who has been exemplary for his support of academic initiatives at the University of Toronto. And let us start with the land acknowledgement. Uh, Mr. Ali Esasi. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Tabakoli. It is such a great pleasure to join you all uh, in cities uh, across North America. Uh, we acknowledge the land that we join you from, which is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, the Wendat peoples, which is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. Hailed as a ruler who liberated Jews from captivity in Babylonia in the Old Testament, Cyrus the Great has been widely recognized as the originator of a tolerant, multi-confessional, multi-ethnic, and multilingual polity in the ancient world. Also praised by ancient Greek historians, the 1879 discovery of the Cyrus Cylinder, which is considered to be the earliest expression of the concept of human rights, reinforced the scholarly view of Cyrus as a visionary ruler of the ancient world. A 10 feet bronze statue of Cyrus the Great donated to the city of Toronto for installation in a suitable public space is a way to bring the legacy of Cyrus into a dynamic relationship with Canadian multiculturalism. Following an inspiring and supportive August 23rd meeting with Mayor John Tory concerning the statue, which was facilitated by my colleague Ali Esasi, this public discussion is intended to demonstrate the impressive level of support for installing the Cyrus statue in Toronto. We have a number of distinguished speakers who will be one after another for a very short period of time, uh, the, the deliver a message. And all of these will be recorded and presented to Mayor Tory and the members of Toronto City Council. And I thought it would be appropriate to start with Mr. Behnam Abadian, who is the legal owner, manufacturer, and the donor of Cyrus the Great statue. Mr. Abadian. Good day, everybody. I'm Behnam Abadian. First of all, I would like to thank you all for participating in this Zoom meeting to support this important project. In addition, I would like to offer my special thanks to Mr. Esasi and Professor Tavakoli for their hard work on this project. I would also like to thank the Honorable Mayor John, John Tory and the City Council for considering the installation of this historic statue. The design of this statue is based on the late Mr. Nick Amini Song's 20 years of study on Cyrus the Great. The small version of this statue was sculpted by Chris Darga, who is a renowned artist and actor. This large version was created by using the small version through the latest technology available. At last, I as a legal owner and manufacturer of this statue am honored to dedicate this full size 10 feet, two inches tall cast bronze statue to the city of Tor Toronto so that the world may also recognize 
one of the greatest champions of human rights. Thank you all again. Thank you, Mr. Abadian. Our next speaker is uh, Dr. Enrico Raffaelli, who is the professor of Zoroastrian history at the University of Toronto. Dr. Raffaelli. Thanks, Professor Tavakoli, for giving me the opportunity to speak at this amazing event. Cyrus is a giant of history. He founded an empire, the Achaemenid Empire, that for over two centuries ruled over parts of Europe and North Africa and a large portion of Asia. An empire that left an everlasting imprint in world history. Cyrus introduced a policy of openness and respect towards different cultures and religions that allowed the Achaemenid Empire to act as a conveyor of cultural and scientific exchanges between East and West. From antiquity to modern days, Cyrus has been seen as the model of the good king by people from different cultures. In medieval and modern European culture in particular, his characterization as the ideal ruler overcame the negative views of the Achaemenids as the enemies of the Greeks and therefore of Western civilization in general. There is no better day than today when we remember the attacks that have been sometimes used as a pretext to emphasize the divisions among different cultures and religions, to highlight the importance of celebrating and remembering Cyrus, an emperor who, to an unprecedented extent, opened exchanges among cultures and broke cultural and religious barriers. And Toronto, a city that more than any other city in the world promotes the coexistence of people from different cultures to form a harmonic society, is the ideal place to host, host a statue of Cyrus, the founder of an empire in which a large variety of cultures coexisted and cooperated. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Raffaelli. Our next speaker is um, uh, Dr. Miguel Angel Toledo, who is the Yarshatter Lecturer in Avestan and Pahlavi Languages at the University of Toronto. Professor Toledo. Thank you very much. Adam Kurush Shaya Siya Haha Manichia. I am Cyrus the King, the Achaemenian. This is how King Cyrus the Great introduced himself in one of the few inscriptions preserved in his mother tongue, Old Persian, the ancestor of modern Persian, and one of the many languages spoken in the vast and multi-ethnic Achaemenian Empire. Religious tolerance, for which King Cyrus the Great was famous, implied not only freedom of belief, but also liberty of addressing each deity in the different languages of each tradition. A multi-confessional society was and is multilingual society in antiquity and at present. In our context, a bronze statue dedicated to King Cyrus is not an outdated glorification of a historical or mythical past. It is a symbolic expression that honors not what we were, but what we want to be. A multi-confessional, multilingual, multi-ethnic community that is proud of its diversity. Taking all this into account, can you imagine a better place, a better city to install this statue than Toronto? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Professor Andres Toledo. Our next speaker is Professor Jennifer Jenkins, who is the professor of German and European history at the University of Toronto. Professor Jenkins. Thank you, Professor Tavakoli. Thank you, everyone. Um, it is a bit uh, shadowy here in, the, in this room, but um, I am going to talk about the past a bit, give some thoughts from a different angle, some thoughts from the great German Jewish archeologist Ernst Herzfeld, who led the Rockefeller Foundation excavation of the great city of the Persian Kings, Persepolis, in the 1930s, and some of Hertzfeld's thoughts on Cyrus and his legacy. For Hertzfeld, Cyrus was the founder of a great world empire, Iran was an eminently world historical place, and the Achaemenids were Zoroastrian, Zoroastrian kings. He excavated at Pasargad, Hertzfeld did, the site of Cyrus's tomb in 1928, before embarking on the Persepolis excavation. And, Hertz, and he wrote movingly about Cyrus's tomb in his journals. 
Hertzfeld's reading of Iranian and world history placed Cyrus's Iran at the root of world civilizational development. And he did this in the 1920s and the 1930s. In Hertzfeld's hands, Iran, Cyrus's Iran, became all of the things that Europeans had identified with Greek culture. It was autonomous, philosophical, original, creative, and tolerant. As he told it, a vital Persian, Persian empire had profoundly influenced Hellenic civilization. Now Hertzfeld's views written in the interwar period echoed those of the eminent Australian archeologist Veer Gordon Childe. Writing also in the interwar period, Childe stated that, quote, it is recognized throughout the English speaking world that Western civilization is but the culmination of a tradition of inventions and discoveries that is ultimately rooted in the ancient East, end of quote. Shield stated that only following the systematic archeological excavations that had taken place in the interwar period, quote, has the full proof of the immense antiquity of, ancient, of the ancient Eastern civilizations and our debt to it become available, end of quote. So they were writing as the world was descending into the second world war, but these archeologists from different countries held tight to the world historical inheritance simultaneously Persian and cosmopolitan, learned and peaceful that Cyrus represented to them. Hertzfeld in his journals wrote on Cyrus's tomb as a meeting place of the old and the new, a place where the old became new again. And that might be a, a fitting way to think about this project in Toronto. I'm very, very happy to support it and very happy to be here with all of you today. I must also confess uh, that when I was sort of thinking and consulting about the most suitable title, it was my colleague, Jennifer Jenkins, who suggested the title, Cyrus in the Six. But I'm also realizing that people not from Toronto might not know that this is a nickname for the city. Um, I think it goes back to the area code, the 416, um, even though th that's also outdated because Toronto is far larger than that uh, area code, but anyway, that's what it means. That's the Toronto, just Cyrus in Toronto. It's a way of saying that. Thank you, Professor Jenkins. Our next speaker is Dr. Firuze Kandahari, retired professor of Avestan and Pahlavi languages at the University of Tehran, and also a lecturer at the University of Toronto. Dr. Kandahari. I'm very grateful to be a part of this event in support of installing Cyrus the great statue in Toronto, which is one of the most multicultural and diverse in the world. I would like, uh, as you probably know, Greek historians like Herodotus and uh, Xenophon uh, wrote books uh, about uh, Cyrus the Great and praised him. I would like here to point out some of the significant attributes of the Cyrus Cylinder. Uh, which is actually a fragmentary clay cylinder uh, with an Akkadian inscription of 45 lines. Uh, the Cyrus cylinder was found uh, during an excavation at the site of the uh, Marduk temple in Babylon in uh, 1879. Uh, here I uh, give you some uh, lines, uh, actually the translation of uh, uh, of this uh, inscription, uh, which is very important. The text contains an uh, account of Cyrus' conquest of Babylon in 539 BC, beginning with a narrative by the Babylonian god Marduk. Then follows an account of Marduk's search for a righteous king, his appointment of Cyrus, to rule all the world, and he's uh, causing Babylon to fall without a battle. Cyrus continues uh, in the first person giving his titles and genealogy and declaring that he has guaranteed the peace of the country. He describes uh, his restoration of the cult, which had been neglected by the, uh, during the reign of uh, Nebuchadnezzar, and his permission to exile people to return to their homeland. Finally, uh, the king records 
uh, his restoration of the defense of Babylon. Uh, these uh, were some uh, translation of the uh, Cyrus uh, Cylinder. And uh, so, as we see, Cyrus has always uh, been a point of reference to people, how to rule a society with different people, different languages and different faiths and beliefs. In other words, Cyrus the Great was the first rural thinking about how to manage a multicultural state in peace and equality. And this is what has built the foundation of what the world knows as the human rights today. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Gandahori. Our next speaker also from the University of Toronto is Puriya Ali Moradi Pilavar, a PhD candidate in Zoroastrian studies at the University, University of Toronto. Uh, thank you, Professor Tawakali, for arranging uh, this, this wonderful uh, event. And, uh, and I, I appreciate uh, you know, the, um, the opportunity. So Saris is obviously, as, you, as we heard, uh, is most famous for his uh, respect for the customs and religious, uh, religious uh, religions of the uh, conquered land. And you know, this is reflected not only in his charter or Saris cylinder, uh, as we just heard, but also in the Babylonian chronicles, as well as the Greek histories, as, um, as we all know. So he's recognized by the Babylonian priest as the appointed, appointed by, of Marduk and, you know, uh, by the Jews as the Messiah sent by Yahweh. So the Greek, uh, the Greeks considered him as the uh, as an ideal ruler and and, and a great conqueror uh, and you know a wise uh, statesman. Uh, but the thing is, the fact that these venerations are coming from the enemy is is quite telling. And uh, you know the hostilities between the Greeks and their eastern neighbors, uh, you know, go back to to a long time. I, it actually goes back to at least the, the clashes between the Lydians and the Medes. Uh, you know, when, um, you know, the Lydians in the in Ionia um, uh, and the Medes. So in fact, it was our very own Cyrus who defeated, uh, you know, Croesus, the Lydian, uh, the Lydian king. So he must have been, you know, quite an impressive, uh, impressive character to, to have been praised by, by, by the main rival of the Persians. Uh, other accumulated kings of kings are not portrayed nearly as positive as, as Cyrus was. Uh, another thing uh, that is worth considering is that he was founder of a dynasty that was a true game changer in world history. The first world empire in its true sense was the Achaemenid Empire that Cyrus the Great established. So he conquered uh, you know, all the way from Central Asia in the East to the Asian Sea in the West. And, and the dynasty that he, that, he, that he established was so prestigious that everyone who came after wanted to be linked in one way or another uh, to them. Uh, and that includes, uh, in fact, uh, most famously, Alexander the Macedonian conqueror, who effectively garbed himself as the last, uh, you know, Achaemenid Empire. So that's why it, it is, it is so, um, it is so uh, telling that he was, he was, uh, he was a great king, not in front of, you know, not in the eyes of the, the modern reader or modern historian, but also uh, in the eyes of the, of the ancient people. And uh, thank you, Mr. Ali Muradi. Our next speaker is Nusha K. Zod, who is a PhD candidate in English at the University of Toronto. Nusha. Thank you all for your great comments. Um, the last time I spoke with Professor Tabakuli, we were talking about the fact that many of the street names in Ireland are the same as those that we find here in Canada. I thought a lot about that and something as seemingly simple as the name of a street, architecture and monuments link us to our home and the cultural memory of lived and loved places back home. We're here to engage in diasporic placemaking. Not only does diasporic placemaking reflect the importance of constructing and reconstructing cultural identity, but it also paves the way for continuity and belonging in our homes away from home. This project speaks to the greatness of one man, but it also speaks to the great culture and people whom he represented with pride, dignity, tolerance, and passion. This is a very meaningful initiative for the Iranian diaspora and those like myself who have distant memories of our home while living our lives here in our diasporic home. This is a very beautiful display of unity and the values that Iranians and Torontonians hold so close to our hearts and our homes I want to thank all of you, and especially Professor Tabakoli and the Honorable Ali Asasi, 
for your part in carving out a space for our community. Uh, thank you, Nushav, and we look forward to celebrating the completion of your dissertation right around the Cyrus, Cyrus Salander as Cyrus's statue in Toronto. <laughs> Um, uh, going beyond uh, the University of Toronto, we have had uh, our, all of our speakers up to this point have been, uh, with the exception of Mr. Abadian from University of Toronto. Our next speaker is the Honorable Dr. Reza Moridi, who was the former Minister of Research and Innovation uh, in Ontario. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Talakoli, for, uh, for the kind words and also for, in, for inviting me to be a part of this uh, uh, gathering here on Zoom. It's really a great uh, honor to have this uh, opportunity to say a few words in this uh, very auspicious uh, event. Uh, and I want to thank you and your colleagues for the initiative you have made and others as well, of course, in the audience uh, for establishing Cyrus the Great uh, Statue uh, in Toronto. And I want to thank uh, my good friend and Ali's good friend, uh, his worship, um, John Tory for considering and for his assistant, in fact, in, uh, in, in accommodating our request to, to find a location, an appropriate location in the city of Toronto uh, for uh, erecting this statue. And the Toronto for many respects is a very appropriate city in the world actually to host uh, such a monument because uh, Toronto is an international city. There are more than 150, 60 languages spoken in the city of Toronto. Uh, more than half of the population of the city of Toronto, uh, they were born out of Toronto. They come from 150, 60 uh, nationalities or ethnic communities. And that is the spirit of actually Cyrus the Great when he ruled a vast land on this planet um, 25 centuries ago. Uh, he established uh, the policy of multiculturalism, multi-ethnicity and the federalism, by the way. Uh, so uh, that is the way he ruled the vast territory he conquered. Uh, so these are some of the values which uh, Cyrus the Great uh, established in this world uh, 25 centuries ago. And today we celebrate them in our beautiful country, Canada, and indeed uh, in its largest city, uh, Toronto. So it is very fitting uh, to have such a monument uh, somewhere in the city of Toronto. Uh, Cyrus the Great's um, uh, uh, actually a replica of the cylinder or Cyrus cylinder. I have it uh, in my room. I'm going to show it to you. Uh, this uh, small replica of the cylinder sits on my desk in my study room, in my room. And when I was with the government, uh, it used to be sitting on my desk at the Ministry of Research, Innovation and Science and uh, for some time, the Ministry of uh, Training College and Universities. And I would uh, talk to, uh, to whoever came to visit me at my office I would give a little, a little speech about Cyrus the Great and uh, his accomplishment and his contribution to the, uh, uh, to the human civilization on this uh, bigger country of us, which we call it planet Earth. So again, thank you very much, Professor Tavakoli. Thank you, all friends. And again, thank you, Mr. Sasi, for taking the time out of his very busy schedule. As we all know, he's now running for election or re-election, I should say. This is going to be his third term as MP, Member of Parliament in our federal parliament, uh, but he has taken the time out of this very, uh, very uh, uh, busy schedule to be uh, to be with us uh, this afternoon. So thank you again, merci beaucoup, and khayli tashakur wa sifas. Thank you for your gracious note, uh, Dr. Moridi. Our next speaker beyond Toronto and Ontario is Dr. Farshid Delshad, who is a lecturer in comparative linguistics and interdisciplinary studies. Dr. Delshad. Thank you. The Honorable Mayor John Tory and respectful council members of the great city of Toronto. One world, one thought. Now the whole world had one language and the common speech. Genesis chapter 11, verse one. Though referring to a mythical story in Old Testament, this verse, contains one of the most crucial and essential characteristics of human value. It is to be unified under one idea and one language in its philosophical semantics of the word logos, the human intellect. This idea was the foundation of the very same incentive that more than 25 centuries ago 
motivated Cyrus, a nobleman from Anshan, a small city in Zagros Mountains in southern western Iran, to unify more than 23 nations under his protective wings. Stretched from Iranian plateau to Mesopotamia, over the Indus River up to today's Sudanese border from Anatolia and Egypt, across Western and Central Asia up to Northern in India. The Kamenid Empire claimed to be the greatest kingdom the ancient world has ever seen. Maintenance of such a vast territory stretched over almost three continents could have been possible merely through tolerance, compassion, and secular Weltanschauung. For reviving this idea for sake of peace and in the name of hope for a better universe, the people of our world need icons to grasp on, yet symbols are the strongest indicators and signifiers thereunder nations of different ethnicities, races, colors, religions, and languages could find their similarity and unanimity. Therefore, as a scholar of ancient Iranian studies and linguistics, I would like to support this initiative to rely on a symbol which over millennia has been characterized, appreciated, and glorified as an icon for tolerance, coexistence, and symbiosis of people around the world. Cyrus the Great was an individual with a specific geographic, linguistic, and ethnic background. However, his deeds were trans-ethnical, translingual, and transnational. That's why the presence of this statue in your city, in your country, would belong to every individual who would appreciate these values. Thank you for supporting this noble thought. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jalshad. Our next speaker is Dr. Dolly Dastur, a professor of psychiatry at McGill University and a distinguished editor of Faizana. Thank you very much for inviting me to say a few words on uh, this very important aspect. Kurush Osiris was not only a great military, had military accomplishments with his empire extending across Asia Minor, but he was also known as a master of diplomacy and tact. Hailed as a ruler who liberated the Jews from captivity in Babylonia and allowing them to rebuild the temple, financing it from his own treasury. Cyrus is the only person other than the Jewish prophet to be mentioned as an anointed one in the Old Testament. He has been widely recognized as the originator of a multi-confessional, multi-ethnic, and multilingual polity in the ancient world. Xenophon, a student of Socrates, wrote the book Cyclopedia, describing the education of the ideal ruler Cyrus. And Thomas Jefferson had two personal copies of this book, which he referred constantly while drafting the Constitution of the United States. The discovery of the Cyrus Cylinder in 1879, which is the earliest expression of the concept of human rights, reinforced the scholarly view of Cyrus as an exemplary ruler of the ancient world. A replica of the Cyrus Cylinder is at the United Nations in New York and the original at the British Museum in London. Toronto has the largest population of Zoroastrians in Canada and to install a 10 foot bronze statue of Cyrus the Great donated to the city of Toronto in a prominent public face would be fitting acknowledgement and reminder of the multicultural and multilingual character of the city and the Canadian mosaic. I enthusiastically support the project which Dr. Tavakoli has initiated and I wish you good luck and success in getting it to fruition. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Dasur, for your generous note. Uh, our next speaker is Dr. Hamid Faridani, who is a lecturer at the University of Toronto and the Ryerson University. I um, uh, want to uh, thank uh, Dr. Tabakoli and uh, 
Mr. Ehsasi and others who have uh, been uh, promoting this, uh, this initiative. Uh, as a Torontonian, as an Iranian Canadian, it uh, makes me proud uh, that uh, we are hopefully going to have a symbol of uh, um, uh, tolerance and uh, respect um, uh, here erected in Toronto. One point that I try to make here, uh, I know others have uh, uh, eloquently talked about uh, Kurosh, uh, Cyrus the Great, but I just wanted to point out the significance of today, which is the 20th anniversary of 9-11 and the hatred that was displayed with that heinous action and contrast that with what 2,600 years ago, the most powerful person in the world who had conquered most of the world and had a vast empire uh, uh, covering many religions and languages and ethnic groups did and promoted that. And you can see why the, the world has risen to, um, to appreciate and to honor and commemorate uh, him all over the world, and now that we are doing this in Toronto, it's uh, a um, uh, justification of what the city of Toronto and the city council and the mayor uh, uh, stand for and promote, which is which is a, a, a testament to uh, their uh, support for all these values that Kurosh Cyrus the Great stood for. Thank you very much, Doctor. Uh, thank you, Doctor Faridani. Our next speaker is the incredible Doctor Jahan Bogley, who was the founding president of the Zoroastrian Association of Quebec in 1968, former chair of the uh, Research and Preservation Committee of the Federation of Zoroastrian Associations of North America, and the representative of the Zoroastrian Society of Ontario at the Ontario Multi-Faith Council, and the Faisana representative at the Parliament of World Religions. I must also say that uh, Dr. Bogley has been an incredible source of support for establishing Zoroastrian studies and teaching of ancient um, uh, uh, Avestan and Pahlavi languages at the University of Toronto. Dr. Bogley. <laughs> Thank you. It is indeed a privilege to me to be a part of this meeting with the distinguished gathering. The name of Cyrus the Great who ruled the vast Iranian empire some 2,600 years ago is familiar to many in the 21st century. Cyrus was the architect of the largest empire of the world in his era, and he was able to assemble that, not through the brutal violence of war, but largely through diplomacy and tolerance to other tribes of his kingdom. The most striking example of his tolerance and generosity is reflected in the, his campaign against Babylonia when he liberated the Jewish people from the Babylonian captivity. The account of this liberation is clearly mentioned in the beginning of the book of Ezra of the Hebrew scriptures. This monarch always showed the willingness to borrow and adapt to the ways of the new tribe that he conquered. He was not only the guiding light towards the vast empire, but also the father of the civilization of his time. And for this reason, Cyrus was held in high esteem, not only by his own people, the Persians, but also by Greek and others. It is therefore no surprise that the baked cylinder that was uncovered by the archaeologist Hormuz Rassam in 1879 with a message inscribed in Akkadian cuneiform 
has hailed by the United Nations as the Charter of the Human Rights. This charter was the enactment of none other than Cyrus the Great, exalted as the anointed one in the Jewish scripture of Deutero Isaiah. The cylinder reflects some of the expressions that he had about on the tolerance when he says that I will respect the tradition and religion of the nations of my empire. Cyrus not only set the Jewish people free, but he helped them build and he helped them build their temples, but also restored the gods of Babylon, Sumer, Akkad, Susa, and Asher. Cyrus basically lived his life by the moral precepts of Zarathustra. He literally lived the Zoroastrian faith. It is not only justifiable, but vital to memorialize Cyrus the Great in 21st century, full of torment and turbulence that needs to be reminded of the patience, diplomacy, tolerance, and generosity that prevailed during the reign of Cyrus the Great in 6th century BCE. My sincere thanks to Dr. Tavakoli and his colleagues for, my, for the opportunity to participate in this discussion. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Bogli. Our next speaker is another very, very special friend of uh, University of Toronto who has been doing the uh, community fundraising for the establishment of Zoroastrian languages at the University of Toronto is Dr. Homi Gandhi, who is the co-chair of Interfaith Activities Committee of the Federation of Zoroastrian Association of North America, and also the president, the co-president of the Religion for World Peace. Sorry, um, president of Religions for World Peace Council, uh, Dr. Gandhi. Thank you, Professor Tabakoli and Honorable Ali Asasi for inviting me today to speak about in support of the initiative which you have started to erect a statue of Cyrus the Great in Toronto. Cyrus the Great represents tolerance, diversity, and magnanimity and his statue would add tremendous value to the cultural and historical landscape of the great city of Toronto. Cyrus founded the Persian Empire by uniting the two original Iranian tribes, the Medes and the Persians. He then expanded the empire, acquiring Asia Minor and the kingdoms to the east all the way to Central Asia. But even though he was known as such a great conqueror, controlling one of the greatest empires ever seen, he's best remembered for his unprecedented tolerance and magnanimous attitude towards those he defeated. For example, upon his victory over the Medes, he founded a government for his new kingdom, incorporating both Median and Persian nobles as civilian officials. When Cyrus, also known as Kurush, freed the Jews from captivity in Babylon, when he defeated Nebuchadnezzar, he gave every Babylonian the freedom to practice their own faith. Nebuchadnezzar had raised to the ground a temple in Jerusalem, but Cyrus not only allowed the Jews to go back to their homeland, but he also promised them funds from his treasury to build, to rebuild their, um, their temple. This second temple, whose outer walls happens to be the wailing walls where Jews even worship today, was built using funds from the Persian treasury during the reign of Darius the Great, Cyrus's successor. As such, Cyrus is the only person other than a Jewish prophet called anointed of the Lord in the Old Testament. 
His actions in Babylon are documented in the famous Cyrus Cylinder, which is also known as the first Declaration of Human Rights, and he is on display in the British Museum in London with a replica portrait at United Nations headquarters. Cyrus's influence in the ancient world cannot be overstated, as even upper-class Athenians adopted aspects of Persian culture as their own. Xenophon, a student of Socrates, also wrote a book called Cyropedia, describing Cyrus as the ideal ruler and the best form of government. Thomas Jefferson had two personal copies of his book in his library, constantly using it while drafting the US Constitution. A copy with Jefferson's notes in the margin is kept in the US Library of Congress. And this influence permeates through the modern world. The tolerance shown by Cyrus towards diverse religions and cultures was the historical first. But these ideas of religious freedom and tolerance weren't enshrined in the law until the establishment of the United States, whose founders were in part Europeans escaping religious persecution. Great cities of the world have wonderful visual displays which portray their values and identity. As one of the most cultural, multicultural cities in the world, Toronto tries with a diverse population representing over 100 different cultures. I cannot imagine a better treatment and a testament to highlight the achievements than the installation of a 10-foot bronze statue of Cyrus the Great in a well-frequented public space in the city, in the great city of Toronto. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ga Mr. Gandhi. Uh, our next speaker is President Mitra Jam of the Zoroastrian Society of Ontario. President Jam. Good afternoon to you all. My name is Mitra Jam, President. <clears throat> Sorry, Mitra Hachamani Jam, I should add. That is my maiden name. <laughs> I'm just going to go over the letter that I actually wrote um, to Mayor John Tory, but I have to thank Professor Tavakoli and Fazana Azamwadia for actually reaching out to me. I was so happy to be actually part of this and it was an honor for me being invited to write a letter. Um, the letter as I wrote to Mayor John Tory was from the Zoroastrian Society of Ontario that we are requesting the city of Toronto to honor one of the greatest figures in ancient history by agreeing to the installation of a statue of Cyrus the Great at a suitable public space in the city of Toronto. And I'm sure many of you are aware that actually the Canadian Museum for Human Rights in Winnipeg in Manitoba has recognized Zarashtra Cyrus the Great as the first and second most influential individuals of all time who have advocated for human rights. Um, I won't read the entire letter, but I just read what I left said at the end that from the Zoroastrian Society of Toronto, Ontario and the University of Toronto, we're requesting the city of Toronto to approve the installation of a 10 foot bronze statue of Cyrus the Great that's been donated to the city of Toronto for installation in a super suitable public space. It's a way to bring the legacy of Cyrus into a dynamic relationship with the Canadian multiculturalism as it stands. So again, thank you for your time and thank you for inviting me. Hoping that this will go through and we'll be so excited when it gets approved to actually have a huge celebration. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mitra Jam. And uh, our next speaker is Aban Rostamji, who is the chair of Faizana Information Research and Education System. Yes, thank you. Thank you for allowing me to come in late. I really do appreciate it because Thank you for joining us. very enthusiastically supporting placing a bronze statue of Cyrus the Great in a suitable place within your wonderful city. This statue will highlight not only the legacy of Cyrus 
as one of the earliest rulers, but it will also encourage the diversity and multiculturalism in his vast empire, as well as in your wonderful city and in your country. So hailed as a ruler who liberated Jews from captivity in Babylon in Old Testament, Cyrus the Great has been widely recognized as the originator of a multi-confessional, multi-ethnic and multilingual polity in the ancient world. Praised by the Greek historians and uh, discovered of the Cyrus Cylinder, which is the earliest expression of the concept of human rights, reinforced the scholarly view of Cyrus as an exemplary ruler of the ancient world. And I wasn't here earlier, but I'm sure you've heard all of this a little bit before. But I do want to emphasize the humanitarian ideals of freedom, respect for cultural diversity, and the inclusiveness that originated with Cyrus the Great 2,500 years ago have also been enshrined in the U.S. Constitution and a replica of the Cyrus Cylinders in the United Nations in New York. This monumental gift will stand forever in the hearts of the great city of Toronto, home to the many Zoroastrians who have proudly settled in this wonderful city and will also serve as an inspiration and beacon of freedom for nations. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Avan Rastamji. Um, Mr. Arzan Vadia, President Arzan Vadia, <laughs> no, thank you very much. Sorry, uh, sorry. No worries. Um, so uh, on behalf of Hizana, we did send a letter to uh, Mayor John Tory that expresses our, uh, our support and commitment. Uh, and I would just like uh, to read that letter, which would be um, self-explanatory to everybody who's here. Uh, respected Mayor uh, Tory, we write to you with a mutual uh, respect and ap appreciation for your services as the Mayor of Toronto and to thank you for helping maintaining Toronto's position as a truly world-class destination for progress, goodwill, and friendship to all of its visitors each year. Fizana, the Federation of Zoroastrian Associations of North America, represents a coordinating body of 27 vibrant associations and 14 corresponding groups across North America. The Greater Toronto Area, we are pleased to inform, is even more special to Zoroastrians as it is home to the largest population of Zoroastrians in the Western Diaspora. The purpose of our outreach is to appeal for your, con oh, appeal for your consideration and support for the installation in Toronto of the 10-foot bronze statue of Cyrus the Great, one of the most influential and iconic historic figures in recorded human history. Hailed as a leader who liberated the Jewish people from captivity in Babylonia, in the Old Testament, Cyrus the Great has widely been recognized as the originator of a multi-confessional, multi-ethnic, and multilingual polity in the ancient world. We are pleased to join forces on this worthy initiative with our partners at the University of Toronto, where we recently established a professorship in Zoroastrian languages and literature. Please consider joining North American Zoroastrians, the University of Toronto, and future generations who stand to learn through this commemoration how Cyrus truly transformed the history over millennia. Consider the following. Cyrus is the only person other than a Jewish prophet who is called anointed of the Lord in the Old Testament. The famous Cyrus Cylinder is known as the first declaration of human rights and documents actions in Babylon. Today, the Cyrus Cylinder on display at the British Museum in London, and there is a replica of it that stands at the United Nations Security Council. Please consider joining the growing support chorus of support in seeing this dynamic opportunity come to fruition and an opportunity to pay tribute to Cyrus, whose contributions continue to transcend the test of time and to serve as a bedrock of human rights and democratic institutions to flourish in perpetuity. We hope and count on your endorsement and we continue, uh, we will hopefully support uh, this initiative at all levels. Thank you, sincerely, Fezana. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Radia, for your uh, inspiring message. And also I'm grateful for Fezana's uh, support for establishing Zoroastrian uh, languages, particularly teaching of uh, Avestan and Pahlavi languages at the University of uh, Toronto. 
all, all right, and um, we go to uh, Mr. Nabil Patrawala, uh, who of uh, Ontario Zoroastrian Community Foundation. Thank you, Prof uh, Professor Tawakali, and, uh, and thank you to all the esteemed guests. Thank you for inviting us uh, to be a part of this uh, initiative. Uh, we wholeheartedly support this. Cyrus, King Cyrus was an ancient, benevolent uh, Persian ruler best known for liberating Jews from captivity in Babylon and for allowing all people of diverse backgrounds to practice their faith and beliefs. Uh, the Cyrus Cylinder codifies King Cyrus's approach to governance based on the virtues of tolerance, leniency, and equality. The script is universally regarded as the first known document on human rights. The original cylinder is housed in the British Museum and a replica is on display at the United Nations Security Council. We believe there is no better place to erect the statue than right here in the Six, one of the most multicultural cities on the planet. Our values of acceptance and compassion in an egalitarian multi-ethnic society are synonymous with those of King Cyrus. The Ontario Russian Community Foundation, together with the University of Toronto, would be pleased to engage and uh, discuss a suitable public location to erect the statue of Cyrus the Great, whereby Torontonians and visitors to a city can learn the legacy he bequeathed to humankind. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Patabala. We go to my very special friend, Shole Shams, who has helped us tremendously in organizing the support for the installation of Cyrus the Great's statue in Toronto. Uh, Shole Shams is the publisher and editor-in-chief of uh, Rahavard Journal of Persian Studies, past president of Rancho Park Rotary uh, Club, and a member of Darish Homayun Foundation. In addition, uh, she is the board member of Fred Matloub, a unit of uh, Benny Brett International. And also, uh, she has a number of other titles, and uh, I know her as the editor-in-chief of Rahavard, Shole Shams who brings a lot of flame to this project. Thank you, uh, Professor. Uh, it's an honor to be here. I'm speaking on behalf of all the organizations that you've mentioned, plus the White House Committee on Human Rights of Iranian People Living in Iran. Um, the Honorable Mayor John Tory, respectful members of this uh, City Council of the Great City of Toronto, Honorable Ali Essosi, and most of all, our great appreciation to Mr. Behnama Abadian for his generous gift of the 10 feet bronze statue of Cyrus the Great to the City of Toronto. We wholeheartedly support the dedication of the 10 feet bronze statue of Cyrus the Great um, to, to the city of Toronto. Uh, in this troubled world, installing the statue of Cyrus the Great, the creator of the first charter of human rights is a symbol of peace, love, tolerance, equality, and respect for all the people of the world and has the potential to attract and bring enormous number of visitors from around the world to your beautiful city as it does with the replica of the Cyrus Cylinder in United Nations. I hope this initiation goes through and we will all gather in Toronto to install this statue as we did two years ago. Our committee installed the statue in, in the Valley in Los Angeles. And hopefully we'll be installing oh. another statue in two months in Laguna Niguel in 
um, California. Um, uh, thank you, Shole Shams. I would be really grateful if you could continue and introduce the members uh, of various organizations who are part of your Cyrus the Greatest Statue Dedication Committee. I would be honored, Mamadou. Uh, I will name the members of this committee in alphabetical order. Mrs. Susanna Azizadeh, President of Iranian American Jewish Federation. Would you please, Mrs. Sure. Azizadeh? Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Shams. It's an honor to be in this committee and I appreciate everybody being on this Zoom meeting. Um, I thought that Mayor uh, Tory would join us uh, so we were speaking to, to him, but uh, I would like to speak on behalf of the Iranian American Jewish Federation in California. And I would like to extend our gratitude and felicitation in support of this vision to commemorate the legacy of Cyrus the Great, an ancient warrior and monarch. In the eyes and hearts of the Jews, Cyrus the Great, the Lord's anointed, embodies one of the most amazing prophecies of the Bible as a savior, convincing his sovereignty over all nations. God says of Cyrus, he is my shepherd and will accomplish all that I please. Cyrus' proclamation, Cyrus's proclamation, releasing the Jewish people after 70 years of captivity and his active assistance in rebuilding the temple in Jerusalem, as our other friends mentioned, are often depicted as his vision in advancement of human rights. The collective leadership in taking on this monumental step is a testimony to Canada's subscription to the most sacred rights of assembly, worship, and expression. We salute the inspirational stance and congratulate Mayor John Tory and the esteemed council members. Thank you. Mrs. Thank you, uh, Susandra. Mrs. Shahlojov Don, President of Iranian Jewish Women Organization. Adoruda Farawan, Professor Tabakuli, Honorable Efsani, Mr. Obadian, Bashole John Aziz, Baraye, in Eftehori Kebemando did Kejos Vein Committee Bashim. The Honorable Mayor John Tory, the distinguished council members of great city of Toronto. Brilliant ideas last through turbulences of time and history only if they have been built upon unshakable pillars of wisdom. In these unfortunate times of ours, when throughout the world, people's differences in beliefs or backgrounds have become a source of division and basis for animosity, prejudice, and hatred, you, you distinguished ladies and gentlemen of council are truly using wisdom in spreading the message of tolerance through installing the statue of Cyrus the Great, the creator of first charter of human rights 2,600 years ago. By displaying the statue of this giant legend in history in Toronto, you will be the harbingers of his world famous declaration of tolerance, understanding, respect, and equality for all. You will especially be affecting the young generation here in Toronto, and for that matter, the visiting youth from four corners of the world. When in California, Beverly Hills City Council approved the installation of modern replica of the world-renowned and ancient Cyrus Cylinder, which contained his declaration, thousands and thousands of visitors from all over the world 
and from different faiths and backgrounds celebrated its installation with overwhelming joy until the wee hours of the night, some loudly reciting his immortal words. And the number of visitors is still growing. Most importantly, their new idea, which in fact was built on the pillars of Cyrus the Great's ancient wisdom, worked its magic amongst the young generation in starting inquiries and ongoing passionate conversation about history, about unity, tolerance, equality, love thy neighbor, and human right. In conclusion, today, on this anniversary day of September 11, one of the darkest days of the history, we, the thousands of members of Iranian Jewish Women Organization, wholeheartedly applaud you for your wisdom. We applaud you for brightening the future by taking a stand against hatred and prejudice through spreading Cyrus the Great's message of unity, equality, and human right. In fact, you are empowering this much needed and timely conversation to break the boundaries and go universal. We salute you and we salute the esteemed citizens of Toronto. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Uh, Mr. Bijane Khalili, the king of books and publishing from Kitab Corporation. My honor. <clears throat> dear Honorable Mr. Esosi, dear Professor Shushteri, and dear audience, let me uh, addressing my letter to the inhabitants of the world and also Honorable Mayor John Tory and respectful council member of the city of Toronto. It is my utmost pleasure to participate in commemorating Cyrus the Great, who has declared the first human rights, and since then, he has become an eternal universal symbolic figure. King Cyrus is revered for numerous impactful deeds which have transformed not only the lives and cultural values of Persian, meaning Iranian, and the Jews, but those of the world. Among his many admirable traits, the one that stands out the most, which was the underlying force of his great thoughts and acts, was his compassion. Compassion for human beings, respecting their needs, culture, religion, and beliefs. Mature kings are known for such characteristics as being centered, making the right decisions, setting boundaries for their sovereignty, providing peace, safety, justice, and order, leaving a legacy, treating others beyond their borders with respect and fairness. And King Cyrus possessed all of them. Psychology, psychologically speaking, we all have an inner king, meaning archetype, and when in its positive side, it encourages us to do the same for ourselves and others as a mature outer king, setting the right, the right boundaries, being fair, compassionate, and so forth. Undoubtedly, having Cyrus the Great as an outer symbol of compassion has positively impacted 
how our ancestors and the all the generation thereafter encounter their inner king uh, their inner kings and treated each other and those from other cultures with honor and a sense of mutual understanding we are proud to say that since year 2008 we at kitab corporation have been observing cyrus the great day in our annual calendar in our annual calendar publications and celebrated his day at our bookstore we at kitab corporation the iranian information center would like to extend our appreciation for your acknowledgement and honoring Cyrus the Great value, values by installing his statue in great city of Toronto. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So Mrs. Nice. Uh, my beautiful and much admired friend, Mrs. Holly Cohan, Chair of Persian American Women Conference. Thank you. Thank you very much. To Honorable John Tory, that is not here, respected council members of the great city of Toronto, and many thanks to Mr. Tavakoli, Mr. Ehsasi, Shola Shams, and Mr. Abadi for putting this wonderful event together and uh, allowing us to celebrate Cyrus the Great. Cyrus the Great was respect has respected the customs and religions of all lands that he conquered. He also was known for his humanity, his, his humanity rights and politics. Cyrus the Great is known to history as a genius, a diplomat and a leader of men. He was respected not only by his own people, by, by, but by all those he conquered. Persians called him father, the Greeks called him lawgiver, and the Jews, of course, called him anotite of the Lord, which means he was the blessed, he was blessed by God. Approximately 59 million of the world's 112 million people of that time, which was 44% of the world's population, lived under his rule. It was also the most diverse and uh, pluralistic empire in the world at the time, unifying different nations, tribes, languages, cultures, religions. Tolerance was one of his most defying characteristics. The Cyrus Cylinder was also one of the most famous surviving icons from surviving icons from the ancient world. So it would be wonderful that we could in the times that is so crucial and troubling right now to unveil a statue that represents peace and tolerance for many people, religion, color, and with so many hopes for the future. Thank you so much. Thank you, Khalidjan. Um, our esteemed Dr. Khosro Mehfar, founder of Cyrus Society and co-founder of its parent organization, Council on Persian Culture. Thank you, Mrs. Shams, uh, and a warm good afternoon from Orange County, California, to all of you dear friends and distinguished colleagues. It is indeed a privilege for me to be with you in virtual space and an honor for the consideration of our uh, uh, request uh, by the respectful and honorable Mayor John Tory and esteemed council members of the great city of Toronto. As you all know, we are living in historical times when one of the most profound and essential necessity of our time is the understanding between the East and the West and more precisely, the diverse cultures, traditions, and custom each has. And the statue of this man 
the man of humanity and leaders of a vast empire, the largest in its time, encompassing more than one third of the world then, with various nations and diverse cultures coexisting and living peacefully together can be a global symbol of this understanding. We certainly hope that the great city of Toronto will lead on this worthy initiative. We all look to your exemplified leadership. In your great city and on this historical day, September 11, if our request is approved, our next generations will grow up knowing that living in peace with love and respect is not that hard. If we all just look up to leaders like Cyrus the Great and learn from his life, as Xenophon eloquently put it more than 2,400 years ago in his masterpiece, Cyropedia. I take this, I take this opportunity to thank the Honorable Mayor Tory and council members for their consideration of this request. Mr. Abadian, Mrs. Shams, our dear Jewish Federation colleagues and friends, and Federation of Zoroastrian Association of North America, and our friends and colleagues there, Professor Tawakoli and uh, the Honorable Mr. Ehsasi, without whom we could not be here. Kudus to all of you and thank you. Thank you. Um, our last member of uh, the Cyrus, the great statue dedication is Mrs. Elhome Yagubion, who is admired by many because she is an activist and proponent of human rights. She is also married to our professor, Farshide Delshad, whom you heard him speak earlier. Uh, thank you so much, Jolajan, for your kind introduction. And thanks every, uh, all the members here uh, for including me to this uh, magnificent project. I'm so uh, honored. Um, with your permission, I read the letter I wrote uh, on behalf of Iran-Israel Alliance of Nations. The Honorable Mayor John Tory and respectful council members of the great city of Toronto. Iran-Israel Alliance of Nations was founded more than a decade ago as a humanitarian organization dedicated to the two ancient nations which carried a long history of friendship and coexistence since Cyrus the Great, the Persian king of 2,500 years ago. Cyrus the Great was a true supporter of religion and cultural diversity and allowed each conquered nation to retain its own traditions religions and rights instead of forcing them to assimilate to his culture. We truly believe raising the statue of the Cyrus the Great could set an example for tolerance, respect, acceptance, and peace within nations, in particular in countries such as Canada, whose very essence of existence is based on the arrival of people from diverse backgrounds. Hence, we cordially support this noble initiative. May this magnificent idea inspire other statesmen and women and politicians of our contemporary world to follow this example, to honor his impact on ancient and modern history, as this has been always under the light of the historicity and re revitalizing the cultural memory of the past that nations uh, manage to survive and succeed. Succeed. Thank you so much. Thank you, Elam John. Professor Tavakoli, I just want to show a small, um, the small statue of Cyrus the Great that I have here. It's made of bronze, and the statue that uh, Mr. Obadian has dedicated to City of Toronto will be ten feet. So you can imagine, this is a gift from Mr. Behnam Abadion to me. Um, thank, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, um, the next question that we have is, if in Toronto, where is it the most suitable public site 
for installing the Cyrus statue. My colleague, Mr. Um, uh, Ali Ehsasi will be chairing this section, the public discussion on the suitable site. Um, Honorable Ali Ehsasi. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Tavakoli. Distinguished guests, uh, allow me to thank each of you for joining us here today. I'm confident and I fully trust that with your support and guidance, we can successfully navigate our way through the necessary checks and balances and approvals at the municipal level in Toronto to ensure that the city will soon be home to Cyrus the Great. It's truly inspiring to be joined by so many distinguished guests scattered across North America, each of you providing guidance and erudite insights on the symbolic significance of the collective initiative before us. But before we get started, permit me to salute an individual who has essentially been the tour de force behind this initiative. Of course, I speak of none other than Professor Tabakuri of the University of Toronto, who has really been a national treasure here in Toronto. As you can all attest of all of Professor Tabakuri's gifts his greatest contribution has always been his ability to convene great minds and impressive individuals in pursuit of collective endeavors. Another individual who has been integral to this initiative, of course, is Mr. Behnam Abadian, whose unspeakable generosity and beautiful creativity makes today's initiative possible. Both Professor Tabakordi and Mr. Behnam has have essentially put their wheels, uh, their shoulders to the wheel to make this initiative a reality. Now, as all of you are well aware, approximately a month ago, uh, Professor Tabakordi and I had the opportunity to virtually meet with his worship, Mayor John Tory, who proved incredibly receptive to the idea of having Toronto erect a statue in honor of Cyrus the Great. Of course, as you can imagine, he also informed us of the various requirements required to satisfy the 25 members of Toronto City Council. As can be expected, it now falls to each of us to do the necessary due diligence and follow the necessary procedures to ensure that Toronto does indeed become the home of Mr. Behnam's generous gift. First, we have commenced already with all of your help, the process of reaching out to various organizations to confirm that the idea is welcomed by a diverse range of organizations. And second, to consider the most appropriate site for the eventual erection of such a statue. I have no doubt that thanks to each of your contributions, Toronto will join other cities, in particular, of course, Los Angeles, to recognize the inspired legacy of Cyrus the Great. Given the impulses that enrich our city here in Toronto and the tremendous diversity that is the bedrock of Toronto, I certainly can't think of another city that would prove as fitting and as receptive to such a beautiful, meaningful, and noble initiative. We're off to a great start because many of you have kindly taken the time to send us your uh, testimonials. And I trust with your collective support, we'll see this through to its completion and look forward to meeting you all individually uh, when we do get to unveil Cyrus the Great. So, uh, we uh, are going to continue to reach out to various organizations uh, to ensure that the consultation uh, process is robust. And also, we like to hear from everyone as to what they think would be the most fitting site in the city of Toronto, which is a rather big city, uh, as you all know, to make sure that we go about this in a tedious fashion and make sure that this is successful. Thank you, uh, Honorable Ali Essosi. I also like to thank 
every individual speaker and their organization for their truly inspiring support and with the kind of support that you have demonstrated, we are hoping that the uh, Mayor Tory and uh, Toronto City Council will move on this project and we see it actualized soon and hopefully for no next no rules we can celebrate it together. Cheers, cheers.